Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Hope you've all been doing well. So for today's video, I want to revisit Rise of the Tomb Raider and show you guys some various tests that I had conducted using its in-game benchmark. The reason why I'm doing this is because in a recently released patch, they implemented asynchronous compute support while running the game on the DirectX 12 API. Now why is this such a big deal? What makes asynchronous compute so important and more specifically, how do AMD cards benefit from it? Well basically a modern GPU has multiple shader units or compute uh, units within it. The problem with DirectX 11 was that it was never able to fully take advantage of uh, multi-threading support and only supported the basic methods. So th this meant that games and uh, software couldn't fully utilize and take advantage of those thousands of uh, shader units inside modern GPUs. With uh, the newer APIs such as uh, DirectX 12 and Vulkan, we now have the solution that is asynchronous compute. This allows uh, graphics cards to fully utilize their multiple subunits within the GPU and there are actually many different types of uh, units such as uh, shader units, ROPs, DMAs or direct memory access units and this will allow for multiple tasks to be scheduled to these units simultaneously which was not possible with DirectX 11 before. The reason why AMD cards are able to get a greater performance boost when compared to Nvidia cards is because their cards at a hardware level are much more capable of uh, handling asynchronous compute tasks. Now I'm just going to leave it at that just because this is a very broad topic and if I was to keep going on about it then this would have just turned into a whole separate video. For your convenience however, I will be including links down in the video description so if you're interested you can read up on this matter and uh, get to know all the know-how about asynchronous compute. So with all that said, I was curious to see how much of a performance boost I would obtain in Rise of the Tomb Raider when using asynchronous compute in uh, DirectX 12. So for my test methodology here, I ran the game's benchmark in DirectX 12 mode with uh, async disabled, then I ran it again with async enabled. I then ran the test for again for the third time, but with a little twist. I decided to overclock my card to see how much performance this card can yield and how it efficient DirectX 12 is along with async and uh, at fully utilizing the card with a boost. So I will be showing you guys six graphs. Three graphs will be for the three scenes at 1080p, and the last three will be for the three scenes at 1440p. Before I jump into these results, I'll all be showing you guys the in-game settings I'll be using and also giving you guys a quick rundown of my system's hardware specifications. So for the in-game display settings, I have DirectX 12 enabled obviously, have the anti-aliasing set at SMAA, and have VSync disabled. Moving on to the graphics options menu, I have pretty much all of the graphical features set to very high and enabled with uh, the exceptions of things like motion blur. My system's hardware specifications cons consist of the following. For the CPU, I'll be using an Intel Core i5-6600K, which has been overclocked to 4.6GHz, paired with 8GB of G-Scale Ripjaws V-Series DDR4 memory clocked at 2800MHz. For the motherboard, I have the Gigabyte G1 Gaming GA-Z170X-Gaming 7. For our graphics card, we have an MSI Radeon R9390 with the stock clocks at 1060 core and 1525 memory and when overclocked, I have set the clocks at 1150 core and 1650 memory. I have the game installed on my solid state drive which is a Samsung 950 Pro M.2 NVMe SSD. Powering the whole system is my EVGA Supernova 750G2 750W 80 plus gold certified power supply. And finally for the case, holding all of these wonderful components together is a Corsair Carbide Speco 2. Now that we've gotten all of the system specs and the uh, game's graphics settings out of the way, let's take a look at these results. Alright, so to start off, I'll be showing you guys the results I obtained when running these tests at 1080p. For the first scene, which shows Lara Croft standing on the mountain, we can see from the graph that with async enabled, our average frame rate increases by 5 FPS, and when running the graphics card overclocked, the performance is in fact increased by another 5 FPS. What is also interesting to see here is that the minimum frame rate is also increased significantly. We're seeing a jump of just slightly over, uh, over 20 FPS. Moving on to the second scene, in Syria, the same story is also present here, with the minimum frame rate again showing a huge jump. 
Now looking at the third scene, in regards to the average frame rate, the performance does increase, but not by a huge margin. We can also see that the minimum frame rate being higher with async disabled as, a, as opposed to having it enabled at stock clocks, so that's the opposite effect from the first two scenes. So not 100% sure as to what caused this discrepancy, the third scene is the most demanding scene in the whole benchmark, so it might have something to do with the increase in the amount of textures that have to be rendered. Um, another reason could be also that um, since there is a loading time between each of the sequences, the graphics card isn't being utilized between those times, so therefore the graphics card actually downclocks, which further leads to the low start in frame rate when the next sequence starts up. So I'm sure that it's taking that minimum frame rate into account. Again, not entirely sure. If anyone actually knows uh, what's going on, then let me know in the comments section uh, down below. The 1440p results are next. The first scene shows us that with async enabled, the average frame rate does increase, but not by a huge amount. However, when the card is overclocked, the average frame rate jumps up by almost 7 FPS. The minimum frame rates, however, are still showing the weird result as shown in the last scene at 1080p. So now looking at the second scene at 1440p, the results are very similar to what was obtained from the first scene. Now finally, the third scene at 1440p shows us that the minimum frame rate across all three settings is relatively close, and the average frame rate between having async enabled or disabled barely made a difference. What I did notice, however, was that at 1440p, having the card overclocked yields a considerable performance increase. In the second and third scenes, the card showed a boost of around 4 FPS when overclocked, and the average minimum frame rate was also higher than the first two settings. So if you're interested in playing Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1440p with this setup, then I definitely recommend overclocking your card, as it will help maintain a higher average frame rate and alleviate performance drop issues with the minimum frame rate. Also, I would like to point out, because I know someone is probably typing this in the comment section as I'm talking, um, I only use these graphical settings for, this te for testing purposes, to see what kind of a performance I would get uh, with a really high level of uh, settings applied. Of course, when actually playing the game, I would tone down a few settings to help boost performance. And even when turning down some of the settings from very high to high, the game st still looks very visually appealing. And uh, that's basically what I go about when I actually do play the game. Um, I don't even play at 1440p just because I prefer to have the higher frame rate at 1080p. Um, and also because, as I mentioned, you have to have the card overclocked if you really want to alleviate those performance issues and uh, it's getting really hot in my area here especially in my room where my temperatures reach a concerning level so I don't even bother with it. So it's nice to see that devs are using the technology to fully help fully take advantage of the graphics cards capabilities. I hope moving forward this is what we'll be dealing with as it will benefit everyone. Even own owners of old cards should still be benefited and hopefully squeeze out some more life out of their cards. Well guys, that pretty much covers this performance overview of Rise of the Tomb Raider running on DirectX 12 with Async. If you guys found this video to be informative and helpful, then leave a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section, and if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for your time, take care and I'll see you in the next one.